Come here. Look at this. Whoops, sorry about that. That is not the beginning. Let me back it up for you. Here is the lovely pile of logs that we have been cutting down for the past several months at this point. I think we need like one or two more and they're already down. We just have to move them from where they are to here. So these are gonna become all the, the different beams and, and frames. This is also going to be the site of the cabin. Right now it's of course filled with logs, but it was already flat because I believe there used to be a shed here a long time ago before us, like, but it, it already kind of had a foundation sort of laid out. So we figure why don't we put something new here since clearly that's what the spot is great for. I'm really excited y'all. Ah, all right. I forgot there was a whole thing before this. It'll be faster if I just give you the recap. So there's this lady who's definitely not just me and she sees in front of a hardware store those sheds that look kind of like miniature houses or barns and she thinks oh my gosh that is so cute that'd be so fun to put together and paint maybe vaguely historically and we need a shed anyway this is perfect and her husband overhears this and goes I can build that. Like he's been taking all of these arborist classes about safely taking down trees for his woodworking. And he's been reading lots of books about timber frame wooden houses and things like that. So he gets started on this. And in the way that these projects do, it just kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until he realizes that he's going to need a little bit of extra help. So he reaches out to this friend of a friend who builds barns and he gets him in touch with a guy who has a truck and can take away the logs that he's cut down to a milling place so they can get made into really nice timbers for the little cottage. Now we, or sorry, they, this couple have a milling set of equipment of their own, but it's for like much smaller scale projects. It just, it wouldn't be able to handle something like this. So they get to work, they get to building. Now, as lovely as this time lapse is, I'm a little disappointed that she didn't do more filming of the process of like how individual joints went together and, and things like that. Just, it would have been cool to see some things in more detail, but she was maybe busy or out of the country or something. <laughs> so that didn't really happen. But at least there is some about the doors and windows and stuff coming up here in a second. We have the doors installed, but they are notably lacking a particular feature, meaning that I can't get out if the doors have been closed. So next we're gonna add some door handles that we ordered from a place that does these really cool sort of old style handle and hardware bits. We're gonna mark them out, mostly done by Mr. Donner, and I'm just there as the handy dandy assistant. The particular hardware that we're installing today is based on Norfolk thumb latches from about 1840 or so. And right now I am just helping get the screws prepped while he then works on this little nook on the end of the door, which is gonna help fit this kind of rounded section of the thumb latch in. And just like that, we have working handles for the door. So that thumb latch is what helps operate this little lifty lever from the outside. It does leave marks on the door, but nah, it happens. We'll figure that out later. In addition to the doorknobs, we also added a bolt to the second door. That way it stays nice and secure while we open and close this one, but we can still open them up both whenever it's the summer and the weather's really nice. Right now it's getting dang chilly. But next up is going to be adding in the windows, which Ah, there's so much that goes into making a cute little cottage. Just imagine if it was something bigger, like a full house or a, a castle, the order of magnitude bigger of a project that is, is just kind of hard to comprehend. So, although speaking of castles, I should mention the lovely sponsor of today's video, Royal Match. So you build a castle. Ah. Ye old sponsorship time. Although I actually did download this one a few weeks back and it's really good. There's no ad playing right before each match or anything. There's, there's actually no ads in the whole game at all and it's free to download. And it's a really nice, I just wanna chill and relax for a few minutes 
that kind of vibe. I really like it as something to do while I'm watching videos, actually. I gotta keep my hands busy, you know what I mean? And it's a really good level of complex, like just enough to be interesting without being super hard and just very like visually well done, well animated, you know what I mean? Very clean, I like it. All right, but I should stop interrupting, sorry. Bonus levels where you help save the king from his nightmares. You should download the game with my link down in the description below and see if you can try and beat my level. Thanks again to Dream Games for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get to work on those windows. For the windows, we first needed to prep all of the different parts. I got to work painting the sort of framed areas with the glass. We put a liquid masking tape over the glass, which was then scraped off after everything was dry. Uh, we also made the frames that go around the window that was planed and then painted to match. Everything was made to match the door. White's okay, but like since that's the color the door came in, I felt like the windows should match. Maybe someday later I'll repaint over all of it, but for right now, we're gonna start off with white. It was so cool once the holes for the windows were cut because it's amazing how much light that adds to a room that you don't necessarily realize isn't there until suddenly it is there. And also the view was so pretty with all that freshly fallen snow. Once we got the window sashes installed, we also added some felt underneath to help prevent a draft from coming through. We added some hardware for being able to lift it up easier and a little hook to help hold it once it's up. It's a bit cold. I don't think we're gonna be making a lot of use of that for the next several months, but in the summer, I'm hoping it'll be really nice. Oh, hey, <laughs> here's where we accidentally jumped in earlier. Actually, I am gonna go grab myself a soda water. Do you want anything? Yeah, this one's for you and let's get back to it. Hello and welcome to my incredibly unfinished studio, cabin, cottage, building. Whatever it is, it is almost a year underway at this point, although it's still very much not at all done. So today is the stove, adding some warmth. So right now, this is effectively a barn. It's got wooden structures, you know, holding it up. It's got a roof, it's got a floor, and that's about it. No electricity, there's no insulation yet, the walls are still bare, there's no plumbing or anything like that. But winter is fastly approaching, so we've decided that the, the next thing that really, really needs to get done is the stove back there, which is in this little crate thing pallet. It's very cute, it's like a tiny pallet with wheels. In order to put the stove down, we do first need to put down a fireproof layer on top of the floor. We're gonna do a layer of fireproof material that was recommended to us by the, the place that we got the stove from. Mr. Morgan Donner is off acquiring that right now and he should be back pretty soon. Then we're gonna put that down first. That's gonna protect the floor. And a few days ago, I went to a, a quarry to get some nice big flat stones that we're gonna put underneath to make the like visible part of the hearth. I think that's gonna look super cool, but that initial layer is gonna help protect the floor from those rocks. And you know, additional fireproofing never hurts anybody, right? First things first though, I think it is about time that we move out all of the temporary, you know, work tables and drop cloths for painting the windows and everything. We're gonna go ahead and move all of that out so that we have a nice clear space to work with. And I can do one really good sweep of it and we can get working on the stove then. We were originally hoping to get the floor nice and sealed and finished before doing this, but unfortunately the weather is just a little bit too chilly for the next couple weeks and probably for the entire rest of winter. So I think that we're just gonna have to commit to getting the stove in now and disassembling it if we really want to finish underneath it later, or we might get lazy and just finish the floor outside of that area. We'll see. No matter what the case, we would like to be able to heat up this space during the winter, so stove's gotta come in one way or another. 
To make the hearth, the first thing we did was take all of the stones and set them out nice and flat so we can get an idea of what we were working with. Then we took some of the biggest ones with some straight edges and tried to Tetris them into position, maintaining the rectangular outline of the, the board underneath as much as we possibly could. There was a lot of taking a stone and flipping it and rotating it and flipping it again, trying to see if we can get the best possible fit. We got a few times where it was really, really close, but there was just one little area Area that didn't quite work so we went ahead and chiseled away any kind of sticking out bits that needed to go so that things could fit together more nicely. This actually really worked out because as we got near the end there were lots of little small areas that needed to be filled in and the pieces that broke off from the prior step were really really handy for filling that in. Alright so the stone hearth pad is assembled. We fit the stones as best as we can <laughs> to the area that it needs to go. Uh, probably mortaring is going to be in our future at some point, but for right now, we're gonna get the stove in place and worry about that later. The stove is now gonna be unwrapped. After the stove was freed from its wooden and plastic cocoon, we went ahead and replaced the feet with the proper ones on the bottom and then sort of shimmy shuffled it into position on top of the hearth pad. The inside is going to get a layer of fire bricks as per the manual and now we just need to connect the stove down here to the hole in the wall up there. Alright, I think it is ready for its very first ever like warm up starter fire. For this very first firing, I'm using some old pattern paper, some old instructions. I've also got a bunch of different cast off pieces from how this was built. Now, I do of course have some, you know, wood that's been chopped up, but uh, I don't know, there's something about using pieces of the, the cabin that are no longer needed from the process. Just, it feels apropos. We made it. So the goal for 2022 was to get this lovely building built and to get it heated. And I would say check and check. We managed both perfectly. And I'm so excited now because we now basically have this giant blank canvas that we prepared and are looking forward to having a lot of fun with in 2023. I'm so excited about all the things that I have planned. Now it's kind of funny looking back because originally when we were thinking about doing a shed and then we were thinking like, well, but maybe we should make it like a whole like room size, right? And we were trying to think like, do we want to do it a specific century, a specific decade. Part of the thing that I was struggling with so much when trying to pick a very specific time and place to sort of replicate was that there's too many things I like from different times and places, you know? There's these really gorgeous 16th century wall paintings. And then there's the this like 14th century canopy bed style that I think would be really cool to do. There's 18th century lanterns I found that I think would be really fun to try. There's just, there's too many times that I think would be really fun to have elements from and Eventually, I decided we're just gonna go with historical. That is the vibe. And I felt so much more kind of like at peace and like, yes, yes, this is the right decision. Once I realized that I don't have to pick one specific time, um, I, can, I can do whatever I want. The vibe is just vaguely historical. Old timey, if you will. And <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to have fun making that happen over the next year. It's, I want to try and be less of a sort of austere version of what we sometimes see for the past because there's so many really cool, colorful, vibrant, beautiful things that I've seen in the past that I don't want to limit myself to just shades of, you know, beige and tan, which is kind of what the blank slate is, but 
I'm super excited to introduce as much color as I possibly can over the coming year. I want it to be like, like a gingerbread house come to life or like if Miss Frizzle had a sister who was more into history than science. This, that's the vibe that I want this place to have. And yeah, I'm so excited to bring you guys along for the journey. All right, so that's basically the end. The rest is just thanks for watching, you know, the usual. So that is the first episode of the new season. I thought you might want to check it out, even though the production value is a little hit or miss sometimes and the release schedule for the rest of the year is really weird. It's like every other month, but also kind of whenever they feel like it somewhere in that zone, but it's all right. Um, do let me know if you end up checking out that Royal Match game so that I can add you to my team. In the meantime, what do you want to watch next?